experience that moment in time when you have no idea how the next few minutes of your life will play out. This was one of those moments. Five women, all in wheelchairs, novice dancers, about to perform at the Attitude Awards in front of a live audience of 500 people and for a television audience of tens of thousands. I think on the night it'll be completely nerve-wracking. Still very nervous. Yeah, still really, really nervous. Getting up there on stage in front of 600 people is going to be a big thing. Obviously I'm a little bit nervous that I'll make a mistake, but, you know, I just think it'll, it'll be fine. Please welcome, here they are, Sarah Belgrave, Lisa Compton, Joanna Dominic, Justine Hunter, and Attitude TV's own presenter, Tanya Black, performing Darkini. It all started in June last year. I'd been asked to rally five women willing to join me in learning to dance and perform at the Attitude Awards. When I think about dancing, I don't think about, I definitely don't think about people dancing in wheelchairs. You know, when I think of dancers, I think of people graceful, leaping, you know, something quite beautiful and graceful. And um, I definitely don't think of the wheelchair as graceful. Part of what sold the others on the idea was a chance to get to know other women in wheelchairs. Jo's new to the wheelchair thing. Her accident was just 18 months ago. An obvious pick for the group was Lisa. She was born with spina bifida and has used a wheelchair most of her life. Better still, she's a born performer. I hadn't met Sarah before, but we'd interviewed her. Her first reaction was to crack up laughing. Justine modelled at the inaugural Attitude Awards and struck me as someone full of grace. To pull this off, we'd need to dance as a team. Oh, lovely to see you. Nice to see you. How was that with your oh, playmate last night? Oh, I know. <laughs> she told me. This is so funny. Choreographer <laughs> Suzanne Cowan was the obvious choice to coach us. She won the ACC Supreme Award at the 2008 Attitude Awards. First of all, I was kind of wanting to ask you a little bit about what you're hoping to get out of this process, you know, just so I can, I can tailor it a bit to, you know, what your interests are. Straight away, I was, no, I'm not going to do this. Absolutely no way. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I sort of sat on it and thought about it for a yeah. night, I thought, no, bugger it, I'm, I am going to do it, you yeah. know? Um, and for me, it's probably more about confidence. For myself personally, um, I don't do a lot of other physical activity, so I was kind of thinking, you know, and I've given up doing the Pilates recently, so I was kind of thinking, oh, well, this will be my exercise once a mm -hmm. week. I just love being on stage, <laughs> to be quite honest. a born performer. I, um, yeah, I've been on stage a lot in, like, plays and musicals and stuff, so yeah. I love being on stage. Cool. <laughs> One of the really big things which I was looking forward to was actually mm. just hanging out with some girls and cheers. Right, And okay. having a little bit of yeah. a chat with you girls, you know, um, yeah. and, you know, sharing experiences and chatting and, and all of those kind of things. Because I know a lot of guys, guys in cheers, mm. but don't know that many girls in cheers. Yeah, dance with the love of mine before my accident. And I really, um, yeah, it was something I had quite a lot of involvement in when I was a teenager and also when I was teaching. And, um, yeah, I just really wanted to get that feeling of expressing yourself and feeling graceful and yeah. um, and creative and all those wonderful things yeah. that dance brings, really. Yeah. And just be aware of how you're moving the shoulder and how much of the rest of your body is moving at the same time in order for that shoulder to rotate. So if you can, try to keep that shoulder down, really down as it comes back. Cool. Yeah, okay, and now, brilliant. Your shoulders are probably knackered. So now just, just give them a shake. I'm hoping that we'll be able to build an awareness of our bodies. Um, I mean, we already have an awareness of our bodies, but to increase that. And it's I'm hoping through that that too. we can talk about some of the issues or, yeah, we can discuss some of the issues that come up for women in chairs, you know, about um, maintaining our bodies and, and how to make the most of what we have. Um, and I also hope that we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, now make a little circle with your nose. That's it. Fine movement. <laughs> tilting forwards just a little bit okay but sort of trying to keep those abdominal muscles tense and back and then leading with the chest 
So there's a little curvature of the spine and coming back to centre. And just, just shake your shoulders out a little bit. I think if I manage to pull this whole dance thing off, it's, um, it, it's going to give me a big surprise. But um, oh, also a huge sense of achievement. When I had my fall four years ago, I focused on the possibility that I might walk again. Dancing couldn't have been further from my mind. Good girl. Justine lost both her legs and damaged her spine when she was eight years old. She's lost confidence the longer she's been in a chair. But you used to be like a champion swimmer, right? So, yeah, <laughs> in New Zealand, in New Zealand, yeah. So you used to sort of get in and out of the pool without... Mm, without even thinking twice. When I was in Fiji just the other week, you know, I swam, but I swam in my denim skirt. <laughs> Crazy. And that was with close friends at midnight, you know? So even still, yeah, fully paranoid. Uh, how do you feel about that? Because it's probably... It's probably uh, uh, I just want a couple of people there just to... Yeah. Yeah. By the next time we meet, a definite bond is starting to form. We're sharing ideas on how to do everyday things. Because the other thing is if you just put your legs out straight yeah. and then kind of just slide down and kind of put it's your... There's quite a lot of weight on your wrist. Oh, yeah. I think when, um, when I was sort of a year and a half into my injury, um, I don't think I would have been agreeing to do something like this at all. Um, <clears throat> that would have been, you know, far too far out of my comfort zone. And then make them <laughs> You okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is really important to have a stable base, because otherwise, you know, you can't really do anything, mm -hmm. can you? Um, so we'll just start with the right shoulder again. Right now, Suzanne's not even sure what shape this piece will take. The training sessions are already about more than dance. You know, in the course of this process, um, you know, will, um, of course, you know, everyone's personality, you know, will come forward and, and, um, and you know, that will be reflected in the kind of movement that they come up with as well and, and you know, and, and essentially shape the piece that we make. You know, I mean, all the time, you know, you're surrounded by all those kind of stereotypes and mainstream views of what women should look like, which, of course, most women don't anyway, you know, mm. if it's television and media, that kind of thing. Um, most women feel inadequate as if they don't meet that. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> if people look at me and they think I look a bit odd or they stare or whatever, I just don't care. It doesn't bother me because people do it. I think that for someone that has become disabled through an accident, um, it's a lot more difficult because you have known what it's like to be able to do everything. Whereas for me, um, having been disabled since birth, I have, I'm not sort of missing out on those things because I've never experienced them. Yeah, I love, you know, going out and um, when I go out into town, I like to dress up a little, you know, and um, show off my attributes and just kind of make things a bit, you know, out there and exciting, you know? Do you wear dresses as well or? Um, I would like to. Justine like dresses to. to hide the loss of her legs. Like, I'll show you. I mean, this is something that I just bought last weekend, and it, it would be a dress if you're mm. standing up. Um, oh, that's lovely. I love that fabric, eh? Yeah. It's really nice. So I don't mind doing that up the top, because it yeah. just hangs. Um, mm. And then I'd usually wear something crisp, but always wear it over skirts, oh, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, yeah, always over skirts. So this not what I'd wear if I was standing, but yeah. that's just what I wear to sort of hide my legs a little bit yeah. I think um it was only probably since I've had my son actually my legs have changed you know they've wasted so oh, um yeah and see how far you can reach okay and then um try try both arms <laughs> we've been training for more than a month but we were still just doing exercises and the other <laughs> Okay, I thought we'd just start with a little phrase. So it's a new one. So I'll just um, demonstrate first and see if I can remember it. I just sort of made it up. Um, two, 
three, four, and then turn to the right, and then one of our Superman turns to the left. Back to the beginning, and... Time was racing by, and I thought there's no way we'd be ready for the awards night. Got it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, let's go. Right. How fast do you want to go? <laughs> I became acutely aware that I was putting these women in the spotlight and maybe they didn't want to be there. Do um, a circle. Something I relate to. Suppose I'm comfortable with my disability. It is something that still pops up. You know, I sometimes wake up in the morning and look at the wheelchair and think, oh, God, this again. You know, and it's always there. You know, you've got no anonymity anymore because you're, you're pretty much, when you go out, you're the only person in the room in a wheelchair. Um, and if there was two of you, well, there's two people in the room in the wheelchair, you know what I mean? It's like, you know you kind of stand out. That's right, I'm here in the wheelchair, that's why people are looking. But then it goes and I'm back focused on the people I'm with and, you know, what's happening the next day and that kind of thing. And what I don't want is kind of people's pity. And I think, um, and yeah, and I know um, from experience the way people talk to me or the things people have said that, you know, pity is an overriding thing. And also, you know, people sort of look at me and think, oh, you know, how does that girl cope? If that was me, um, I just wouldn't be able to cope. Every time I sort of stopped, you know, going to the gym or going swimming, I'll start feeling miserable in a sort of week or so and kind of realise that it was all about needing to do some exercise, whether it's, you know, gym or swimming or rock climbing or whatever's going on at the time. Nice and slow, just to warm your shoulders up. People always say, oh, you could do this with your wheelchair and you could have bright yellow wheels and you can have the flag and the cup holder and, you know, spooky dokies and just about every, you know, I've heard them all. Um, but I'd much rather just keep it <laughs> low key and um, don't want to, you know, draw too much attention to myself. It was um, 2nd of Jan 2000, so yay, go the millennium, and um, some friends and I were going camping and we stopped up north to have some fish and chips and I climbed the tree. Um, and then I fell out of the tree and kind of realised pretty instantly that it was a spinal injury. So yeah, got the, um, had three fire engines, two police cars, one ambulance and the Westpac helicopter. Okay, Actually, there are times when being in a chair can be really exciting. And most people don't realise that. They think, oh gosh, it must be really restrictive and it must be really hard, you know, and I would never want to be in that situation. But what they don't realise is that kinesthetically there's some really exciting aspects of it. The challenges are the same for anyone um, creating a piece of choreography. Um, it's, it's really about um, how to best use um, your body and, um, and it's actually really drawing out your own creativity. And pushing round to the right. What's more worrying is when Suzanne kind of looks at me and she kind of laughs. <laughs> I'm like... Circle and... Right. And I have this image that I look great. <laughs> I'm like, I'm totally doing it. Totally, I've got it, I've got it. And then Suzanne just goes, um, you just, oh, Sarah, um, can you just show me that again? And, and then I realise, oh, God, I don't have it at all. Quids, left arm, left elbow. Pushing forwards. I think right. we know the dance, well, but that's only really happened in the last couple of rehearsals. So it was cutting it a bit close to the line Done. for my liking. For me, like I'm still getting used to my body being like this and I needed to have time to build up my confidence in moving the way that we do and probably we all needed that 
Jo spent years dancing and teaching before her accident. When you first had your accident, did you think, oh, it's all right, I'll still be able to dance in my wheelchair? No. <laughs> no, I didn't think that dancing would sort of be possible. It was only, it was when I went, I went down to a girlfriend's wedding probably about a year ago now, and we went out and um, I had a fabulous time dancing. So that was probably the first time after my injury that I thought, actually, you know, this is still fun and it's, it's different, a lot different, but it's still, um, it's still fun. I did think that it might be tricky to get a boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I did, did kind of think that that would be who would really want to go out with someone in a wheelchair. Um, but turns out that it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what exactly are you doing in the dance? Sarah's Did been you... living with Evan for a couple of years now. I'm just going to be really exploring what um, the five of us girls can do in the chairs, really. And you're the lead, eh? I'm not the lead. <laughs> I think oh, we'll all have me. equal parts. I didn't tell you that. So yeah. what about relationships? Because I tried to get um, the dish from Sarah about how to meet such a lovely man. <laughs> and neither of them were giving me really any tips. So I was thinking about that more after we had our conversation. Yeah. And you sort of said, oh, um, I haven't you know, met or I haven't had as many offers. Um, and I think the fact is that I haven't sat around waiting for anyone to offer. I think yeah, I've yeah. been fairly assertive in my... Really. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Good on you. I, I am happily single, but I, but I also know that I feel... Um, my chances of definitely being... Um, you know, my chances of meeting somebody um, have definitely diminished. I've been out with my dog bef like a couple of times and sort of well, normally it's sort of out of the couple go, oh he must be such a good companion for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good boy, bring it here. Bring. Bring it here. Bring. Bring Vicky, bring. Mm, good boy. Vicky. I was in Radovake, it's four places, Rotorua, it was with the girls, um, we were down there and yeah, we were lining up going into a bar and um, yeah, and I and I don't even remember what the guy looked like but he, he came over and he said, oh, you know, you'd be so pretty, you'd be so gorgeous if only you had legs and you know, things like that but they, you know, that was when I was about 18 and I remember that crystal clear. I met Pete in about June last year I think it was and yeah, he was really um, happy to help as a friend to start with and then, um, yeah, he just helped my family, helped me sort of transition into this life and made me realise that it's not going to be that bad. <laughs> and we can support each other because there are a lot of tough things that you have to put up with in this world and it's really good to have someone who gets it. It's okay. the other person's opinion, like, it's their, it's their feelings about how they feel about people with disabilities. If they think, oh, you know, oh, not so sure, then of course they're not going to go for you. Yeah. Hmm. And you kind of don't really want that kind of person exactly. anyway. Growing up as a teenager, I was OK with it. Um, it's something that, that sort of kicked in more in my sort of early late teens and now early 30s. Um, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. And I think it's more my issue opposed to, to others. And my friends will tell me that as well. They'll say, you know, no one's staring, nobody's looking, no one's even phased, you know. But yeah, I, I feel the stares and I feel the, you know, the looks. So when I first had my accident, the registrar asked if I had any questions and I said, yes, you know, am I still going to be able to have sex and am I going to be able to have babies? And he just looked at me kind of aghast and he sort of looked down at his chart and sort of murmured something and said, oh, I'll have to get back to you. Um, oh, I don't think I'd miss out on anything as such. Um, I guess um, I was interested in one of the girls that's had, has had a baby, and so that's always quite an interesting thing to kind of think about how, you know, that will work. Your boy is so good. What? He is pretty good at the moment, eh? Yeah. How old is he? Next week. Oh, 
You've got yeah. two, have you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been meaning to get in contact with someone who's been in a chair and had a child and just to see what their experiences were as well. Um, and, you know, it's just always good to have a girly chat about about different stuff that, um, you know, your more able-bodied friends might not understand so much. So The relationship we have, what well, I think, is, is brilliant. I mean, it, it's lovely. It really, truly is lovely. You know, we've had our times, don't get me wrong. He's been a little monkey, <laughs> especially in the younger days. Oh, that was, a, that was a bumpy ride. I look at my friends who are mothers anyway and, you know, able-bodied and just go, oh, my gosh, that looks so hard. And then just think, oh, gosh. Oh, come on. I mean, the kids do stare and they do ask questions and, and I've had to explain to them, um, you know, when we first started school, for example, he would get quite... Um, aggressive. Seven, seven. Usually he just blows it off, but you know, I heard him, oh, what did he say? He said, um, yes, mum's got no legs, but she, she can do anything, he said, you know, like, he's, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's learning to deal with it, I suppose. I guess essentially it's just movement. So that kind of takes the takes the mystery out of it. Well, when I do my stage production with my stage group, we stick to a script and we stick to this is how it's going to be. Whereas with this, there's been a lot of changes. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't want to look like an idiot. No, no way. Um, I've been a little bit selective on the people that I've told. Well, I mean, it's not me. I don't like that way of working where it all just kind of you know, happens organically. You know, I sort of prefer to, to know what I'm doing and then let's learn it and let's get it really, really polished before the, before the night. No, I think you've all come a long way. I mean, you don't realise, I mean, in that sense, you know, I think what you've learned in a very short space of time is quite amazing. And so four months later, the five of us, now a tight dance troupe and firm friends, find ourselves here on the stage at the Attitude Awards, ready to perform. Something that I would have never thought I would have done and actually getting up on stage and doing it is a big thing. I think there's something special when you see all the girls moving at the same time. I'm a dancer. <laughs> you have to believe it, don't you? <laughs> making it a piece that involves all of us and involves all of our thoughts and all of our feelings and I just think that part of it is really great. I've learnt that I'm, I am actually able to put myself out there to do something that I would never normally want to do. I feel like I can dance again. And I feel like I can be graceful because I actually thought I'd lost that too. I don't know, 
know what you you know what you would make of it, but to me it's kind of about um, friendship. It's sort of yeah, and that sort of connection between each other, and particularly you know particularly between women in this particular mm. case that you know, that very special quality that um, female friendship has. I think we are quite brave to do it because like one of the other, like Justine said, um, the thought of it absolutely terrified her so she thought, well I better do it. And I just think that sums up most of us. Thank you.